So our third unit is limits and continuity, and we're looking at 3.1 visual limits on pages 115 to 125. Now that's 3.2 in your text, but um, we're skipping the first section. Our curriculum outcome, to demonstrate understanding of limits and continuity, and our lesson objectives, to understand what a limit actually is, to be able to find out what the limit of a function is by examining the graph of a function, to learn when a limit doesn't exist, and to learn the proper notation when writing limits. So most of us understand what the word limit means outside of the world of mathematics. For example, the speed that you're allowed to drive on a highway is a speed limit. Um, how much weight you can bench press in the gym, there's a limit to that. Um, how far you can argue with your parents before you know you lose that argument, there's a limit to that. And how high a ball will bounce if you let it drop from your, from your hand, there will definitely be a limit for that. Um, in math, the limit of a function is basically what height or what y value that a function approaches as you approach a certain value for x. And today we're just going to focus on being able to find the limit visually, and that just means by taking a look at the graph of a function. So we know what the basic function f of x equals x squared looks like. It's a, just a basic parabola as shown on the screen there. Now, um, there are some things that you must consider when determining what the limit of a function is, and we're going to go through an example in a second, but the first thing you need to consider is you must approach the same height, whether you come from the left-hand side or the right-hand side. In order for there to be a limit, it has to be the same height whether you come from the left-hand side or the right-hand side of that function. And number two, the function doesn't actually have to exist um, in order for you to find the limit at that one point. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at some notation. So this is the way that we write limits. We have LIM for limit, and then underneath we put in x approaching whatever value we're talking about. In this case, the question says we're going to find the limit of f of x, which is our parabola here, as x approaches 2. Now, it looks like there's a little exponent here. That's just a positive sign, which just means that we're coming from the positive side of 2, which means from the right-hand side of 2. So as x approaches 2 from the positive side, which is on the right-hand side, you can see that the limit would then be 4. So as x is coming down this graph, it's coming from the right-hand side, from the positive side, it's approaching a height of 4. So we would say that the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side of f of x is equal to 4. Now, the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side of 2, which is from the left-hand side, so as you move along this curve, as you're approaching from the left-hand side, it also reaches a height of 4. And that means if uh, it reaches the same height from both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, then the limit does exist, and that limit is 4 in this case. Now, there are cases where the limit does not exist, and we'll go over those in our next example. So example, it says find the limit in each of the following cases. And so here's our graph, our visual graph, and here's all the questions we're going to answer. Now the first thing you need to remember is that in order for the limit to exist, it has to approach the same height coming from the left and the right-hand side of that same point. So for example here, it says the limit as x approaches 2. So here's x approaches 2 here. So as we come from the left-hand side or the negative side, it approaches a height of negative 3. And as we come from the right-hand side, it also approaches a height of negative 3. So that means that the answer for a is 3. Um, limit as x approaches 0. Well, here's um, 0 right here. So as we approach x from the left-hand side, as we approach 0 from the left-hand side, the height is also approaching 0. And as we approach it from the right-hand side, the height of there is also approaching 0. So that means our uh, limit is 0. Next question, the limit as x approaches negative 2.5. So negative 2.5 is right here. And so the height as x approaches negative 2.5 from both the left and the right-hand side is a height of 2. Now the limit as x approaches 1, well as we're approaching from the left hand side and the right hand side of 1, you can see that it approaches a height of 1 as well. Now here's this concept of where this graph actually doesn't exist at 1, it doesn't exist at 1 comma 1. When x actually equals 1, the point is down here. However, the limit is still the same because it's approaching a height of 1 from both sides even though it doesn't exist at, at 1. And so for part E, when they're saying f of 1, they're looking for where this function exists. So when a x actually equals 1, the function exists at a height of negative 2. For part f, we're for, for, if we're finding sorry f of negative 2, then we're, and we're approaching from the right-hand side, or sorry, f of negative 2 is actually this point right here. And so that means that f of negative 2 is 2, because that's what the height is. G, it says we're approaching negative 2 from the positive side, so that means from the right-hand side. So as we're approaching negative 2 from the positive side, 
we are approaching a height of negative 2. But if we're approaching negative 2 from the negative side or the left-hand side, we're approaching a height of 2. And that means for part i, the limit as x approaches negative 2 actually does not exist. We can write d and e because the two heights are totally different. One is approaching a height of negative 2, and the other one is approaching a height of positive 2. So the limit does not exist. So in summary, the limit of a function is just the height that that function approaches as x approaches a specific value. You can find the limit of a function as you approach from the left and right hand side of that point, and you actually have to in order for that limit to exist. But, and in order for the limit to exist, it must approach the same height from the left and right hand side, but the function doesn't actually need to exist at that point. So it could be a hole in the function, or it could be something like a vertical asymptote. So if your function looks like this, as x approaches zero, the limit as x approaches zero is actually, well, as you approach zero from the right, left hand side, it goes all the way up forever, so that's infinity. And as you approach zero from the right hand side, or the positive side, that's also infinity. So the limit in this case of f of x would be infinity. So that is definitely a possible solution. And your assignment is on pages 123 to 125. And um, you can do questions 3 to 13. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.